Okay, team, I want you to take two minutes and I want you to read this question, okay? And and we are we are working on, you know, right now working through, you know, uh, decoding scenarios or orthographic mapping scenarios. So I want you to think about this one right here and uh, and then we'll discuss it. But take two minutes now and just read it to yourself, okay? I have uh, say it, move it, and spell it here, this phoneme graphing mapping activity as a hint. You can think about that as you read the question, okay? Read the question now. Pause me and read the question. Go. Unpause. These questions are nice and wordy. They're a good challenge question, okay? I'm going to read it. It says here, a second grade teacher. So second grade, that's important to note. We'll talk about it in a little bit. A second grade teacher wants to ensure that students become automatic in recognizing the ortho orthographic patterns they are explicitly taught during decoding instruction. Okay, so a teacher wants students to build automaticity with uh, spelling patterns that are covered in decoding activities. So they want to get better. They want to, they're doing, they're doing a reading activity and they want to make sure they recognize the spelling patterns so that they get better at the reading, I guess, something like that. According to evidence-based practices, which of the following instructional strategies best promotes students' automatic recognition of a new phonics pattern or new spelling pattern to support their proficient reading? Okay, so you teach something, uh, you wanna help them, I guess, uh, recognize you in a reading activity, you teach a phonics rule, and then you're gonna do a spelling activity that helps them highlight that phonics rule so that when they come to reading, they'll have more automaticity. Is that right? Okay, so let's try that again. Teacher notices that the students are having difficulty with words like bright or right or height. Okay, yes? No, that last one's not right. So I'll do high, high. Okay, that's good. So these are all bright, right, high. Having difficulty with these words. So they do a spelling activity that targets this rule right here. We have three letters that make one sound known as a trigraph, right? And then that spelling activity is gonna then, so they're having difficulty with the decoding process. The teacher pulls the words out in isolation and does an encoding activity. After doing the encoding activity, the students have more success with decoding those words. And that's going to lead them to um, understand that have more energy in understanding the text, right? It's going to build fluency, which is going to build uh, uh, more brain uh, space for understanding the meaning of the words, right? Okay, so we're looking for an instructional uh, activity that's going to help them um, learn these new rules in that uh, in, in as part of a decoding activity. Oh boy. Okay. Uh, let's go to the answer. Provide, providing practice with phoneme graphene mapping. Like say it, move it, and write it. And various reading and spelling activities that focus on words containing the new orthographic mapping pattern. So we're trying to teach this new orthographic mapping pattern, IGH, right? So we're going to do, we're going to do something like, let's say, say it and move it, say it, move it, write it where we uh, say the word um, bright. They, and then the student isolates the phonemes. They do phoneme graphing mapping. So they're going to do bright. They're going to do br, b, r, i, t, bright. And then they're going to spell it. So say it, move it, spell it is a type of phoneme graphing mapping. And it's highlighting a target uh, um, orthographic pattern, right? And they're saying we're gonna we're gonna have to do th these activities and various reading and spelling activities that are gonna uh, focus on uh, on targeting that, that target or uh, spelling pattern. Does that make sense? I feel like they're repeating the same idea over and over again. Clearly. Um, when you see a student struggling, let's say with a phonics pattern, they clearly want you to do some type of explicit 
phoneme graphing mapping activity, yes, to help them identify that pattern that they're missing in the decoding and encoding process. If you and 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 say move it spell it helps do that. It helps with uh, matching up phonemes to letters and then uh, letters to say it helps with sorry with uh, letters to phonemes and phonemes to letters. It helps with back and forth decoding encoding encoding decoding right. All right, that's the right answer. Now let's look at the ones that aren't correct. Um, A. Provide instruction in the new orthographic mapping or spelling pattern implicitly when it arises in the context of the reading a shared text or in, in reading in the context of reading a shared text or it appears in a text selected for comprehension instruction. Okay, so the key thing is this. This is saying we're going to teach the new phonics pattern, the new orthographic uh, spelling pattern as it arises in a story that you're doing. So in the moment, you're reading something and you come to a new uh, phonics pattern. And in the moment, you take this as a learning opportunity to clarify IGH, right? Now, now this is whole word instruction where we're, instead of taking the words in isolation, clarifying it, and then giving students time to practice it in reading and writing activities, uh, the teacher is reading uh, reading something and spots it in the middle of reading and tries to teach a mini lesson. And we're really moving away from that one into more, um, more explicit, more direct instruction. So we're moving away from um, addressing this as it arises uh, in, in context, right? So, so rather than um, teaching these phonics rules in the, in, the, in the moment, we're going to more explicit, direct instruction, you know, sort of ways of addressing it. Does that make sense? Does everyone see how B is much more explicit? I mean, phoneme graphing mapping like this one right here. Oh my goodness. I mean, you're literally super, super explicit, direct, matching up sounds with letters and letters with sounds, right? Okay. Um, and the student can see it. The student um, has that graphic organizer to match up the letter patterns with the sounds and then, and then write it out. So this one, is not the right one, okay? We are moving much more into some an activity like B. How about this one right here, C? Emphasize the use of three queuing system. Um, so three queuing is, is when we look at, does it look right? Does it sound right, right? Does it, um, does it look right? Does it sound right? Is it, does it, uh, I forget the third one. Okay, does it look right? Does it sound right? Does it make sense? That's it. Okay, we're moving away from that one too. Okay, the three queuing system, does it look right? Does it sound right? Does it make sense? We're going into much more, again, going to something like this right here, where we're isolating the pattern, highlighting it, and do an activity that involves, let's say, some type of explicit direct instruction on the new pattern. And then we make sure that the student has time to practice that new pattern in a variety of different reading and writing activities. So the teacher works with them in isolation on it, and then they get a variety of different ways of practicing that new rule in context and out of context again. So they have multiple exposures to it. Okay, now what about D? Emphasize a, uh, emphasizing a tactile, tactile kinesthetic approach when introducing new words that follow the new orthographic pattern. So, this one I could see some teachers going for because this, right, is a very tactile kinesthetic activity. I mean, if you're actually doing it and you're doing pegs, right, you have that tactile piece, you're touching the peg and the kinesthetic piece, you're moving the peg down and then you're swiping, right? So it'd be like, uh, um, b, r, i, t, right. Well, look at that. There's that kinesthetic piece, we're touching the peg and then the, kin the, the, the tactile piece, we touch the peg. And the kinesthetic piece is when we segment, 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 blend. So this is saying, though, emphasize, which, which in my mind says it's a little too narrow. Like, um, you only do this. You only do say it, move it, write it, you know, or whatever, or, or, or Alconin boxes. And so that's really not the best. You don't, oh, you sometimes you do this. 
and some other things too. That's why B is better than D, okay? Now, B, you do phoneme, graphing, mapping. Sometimes you do say it, move it, you know, say it, move it, spell it, write it. Sometimes you do another activity. But the, the goal is to do a variety of different activities that contain that spelling pattern. Woo! Okay. All right. Uh, another good question. I hope, I hope you're enjoying this team. Um, the answer is B. It's from this test here. You get lots and lots of exposure to uh, some of these ideas. A good push question. All right. Good challenge question. So take some time on these. Review them again.